Good evening, everyone. I'm Kamen Anchev. Freddie Knighton has struggled a bit this season, but had himself an incredible game against ULM. Freddie Kirk had a career-high six total touchdowns. Five of them came through the air, which also tied a Red Wolves record. Knighton also had a season-high 300 passing yards. We knew we were going to take some shots on the field, back those guys up, um, make it a little bit softer. So, um, Coach Bill did a great job calling at the right time, and uh, we connected the dots. You know, we haven't been able to do that much all year. On the basketball, the Lady Red Wolves rounded out their early season signing period with another guard in Tori Salo. More on that on KIT8.com, but the men's team gets back on the court tonight at home against Lyon College. A-State fell on the road against SIUE 79-70 last Friday. The home opener tips off tonight at 7.05 p.m. On the volleyball, Mallory Warrington was named the Sunbelt Setter of the Week after dishing out 37 assists against App State. The 25-1 Sunbelt champion Red Wolves are ranked 19th in the PrepVolleyball.com poll and begin Sunbelt Conference Tournament play on Friday against Georgia Southern. The brackets can be found on KIT8.com. Switching gears, Arkansas guard Anton Beard has been reinstated by the team. Beard was previously suspended after facing forgery charges this past summer. He's entered a pre-trial diversion program in an attempt to avoid prosecution. Beard can practice but can't play until the conclusion of the fall semester on December 18th. He averaged six points last season. The football tight end Hunter Henry has been named the John Mackey Award semifinalist. He leads SEC tight ends with 490 receiving yards. The Razorbacks are racking up awards following their 31-14 win over LSU. Dan Skipper is the SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week and Dre Greenlaw is the SEC Freshman of the Week after 12 tackles and a forced fumble. I think he's the only freshman that's been given the award twice now in the SEC. I'd really uh, love to see him be named a uh, SEC Freshman of the Year, which I think is a very realistic uh, uh, opportunity for him. On the high school football, here's a look at our playoff edition Sweetest Play of the Week nominees. We start with the game of the week, third and long in a key moment. Zach Griffin runs around, then switches fields. This is an incredible run as he makes a cut. Heads back to the middle, he would make it all the way to the one yard line as Bates holds on to the second round of the playoffs with a 42-35 win. Our second play features defense as Diamani Davis makes the great pick. Hoxie's also on to round two with the 21-14 win. For our third play, it's yet another big run by Anthony Davis as this one's a game winner. Cross County moves on as well with a 36-29 victory. Our fourth play is yet another incredible run. Earl's Marcus Brown with the big burst. Look at this speed. The defense can't bring him down. They just keep trying and Brown keeps going. But Earl loses a tight one. Still a good season for the Bulldogs. And finally, we had the Rivercrest. Look at this stiff arm by Peyton Adams. Wow. From there, he's gone. The Colts also advanced to the second round of the playoffs with a 43-0 win. Head on over to KIT8.com to vote. Polls close Tuesday at 8. You can see the winning play that night on Region 8 Sports at 10. And that's sports. Now a break.